So let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, a very warm welcome to you wherever you are watching us from uh, this morning. Uh, we come to you from uh, the Parham Chapel in St Peter's Church uh, in Henfield, part of, of the parish of Henfield with Shermanbury and Woodmancote. Uh, and I'm the vicar of the parish, uh, Reverend Paul Derrick. Uh, and it's my delight and my honour to be sharing our worship with you this morning. So today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. It's a day when the church remembers that although we only have one God, he is three persons. God the Father created us, he created the world and the universe in which we live. Over the last few months we've reflected on the events of the life of Jesus Christ, God the Son, as we remembered his birth at Christmas, his suffering on the cross on Good Friday, and the joy of Easter Day and the new life that the resurrection brings. And last week on Whit Sunday, the Feast of Pentecost, we remembered the coming of God, the Holy Spirit, and the birth of the Church. So today is a moment for us to pause and to consider the wonderful mystery of our God, who is one in three and three in one. So we're going to sing our opening hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. respond to our hymn in the words of our collect, our opening prayer for this Trinity Sunday. Let us pray. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love. 
that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So no matter where we are this morning, we gather in our hearts as God's family to celebrate his presence with us. But let's also remember those moments when we have let God down, our failure to value the love of others and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. After each petition of Father forgive us, the response is save us and help us. Father forgive us, save us and help us. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father forgive us, save, save us, us and help us. us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us, for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer, therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and with our voices we will praise our God. So we're going to hear now our first reading, which uh, my wife Jan is going to read for us. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the heavens with a span? And closed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or has his, or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment, and who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, yet they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in that reading, we hear the words, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And it reminds us that all of us probably have slightly different images of God. As we reflect on the Trinity today, I'm going to invite you in a few moments just to pause this service, to go and find a collection of items around your homes that might represent for you something of your image of God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So for example, for the Father, you might have something 
that represents the world or creation, um, just like some flowers or something like that. Uh, for Jesus the Son, you might have a cross or a crucifix, or if you haven't put them in a loft already, you might uh, have a crib figure uh, of the infant Jesus. Or you might want to get just a small glass uh, of wine or uh, a small amount uh, of bread. And for God the Holy Spirit, you might want to light a candle or find a picture of a dove uh, or a picture of some flames. If you have children in the house with you, you might ask them to draw three pictures of what represents to them God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit. So do pause the service now. Go uh, and find those things which represent uh, the Trinity uh, for you. Uh, and uh, when you come back, start the service again. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you've managed to find uh, a few things that represent for you something uh, of God uh, in whichever persons that you've managed to uh, find. And uh, we're now going to sing our next hymn, the hymn Thou Whose Almighty Word. is from the Gospel according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, may I speak to you in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I began my preparation for today by doing what I usually do, read the Bible passages, pray, uh, and then read a reflection on the readings by uh, a, a theologian. And I decided this week to turn to the book, The Word is Very Near You, 
by a former near neighbour of mine when I lived in Hove, the retired priest and theologian John Pridmore, who begins his reflection for today by saying, on Trinity Sunday, we try to talk about God. That's very difficult. Trying to describe God is difficult, and it often seems to me that our understanding of God as Trinity is not helped by the fact that in our worship and in our study of the Bible, we often focus on just one particular aspect of who God is. And there's nothing wrong with that because it allows us to focus our thoughts in a particular way. But can it help us to understand the Trinity? As John Pridmore reminds us, it's very difficult. Many Christians down the centuries have struggled with the whole concept of how Father, Son and Spirit relate, relate to each other. Indeed, the development of the creed as a statement of faith was an attempt by the early church to have a uniform understanding of Christian belief. The debates, of course, continue today, with the Catholic and Protestant Western Church having a slightly different view from the Orthodox Eastern Church. Yet how important is it to be able to explain or understand the Trinity? Is it all just a mystery that we need to accept? Or are we tempted to either reject it or accept it because it speaks into our understanding of God? Our readings this morning can at first look as if they're very different from each other. Yet both of them are trying to express something of the wonder of God. Isaiah's God is dramatic. His words describe a God so awesome, so huge, that he can measure out all of the waters of the earth in the hollow of his hand. And the nations are like a mere drop from a bucket. He's a God who has the power to create everything we see and who will live forever. In these words, the prophet is desperately trying to put into words his experience of a God who is truly transcendent. A God so big that even the words of the prophet fail to fully describe his magnificence. So I wonder, do we sometimes experience God in that way? In a way when we just feel that he's something that just is. Something that no matter how much we try remains mysterious and outside of our understanding. Perhaps for us it would be like trying to imagine where the edge of the universe is. Of course we human beings like to be able to understand our experiences and if we're not careful we might be tempted to describe God in ways that can seem as though we're trying to place him in a box. But this is something that Isaiah doesn't do. It would be easy for him to describe God as transcendent and beyond our understanding, but he doesn't. For Isaiah, the God who made the world remains a God who is also intimate enough to renew the strength of the weary, of those who are exhausted with life. He's a God who, despite creating the universe, cares deeply for the people that he's made. But the image of the creator God caring for his creation can also be difficult to understand. It raises many questions, both with uh, those of us who have faith and those with none. In recent weeks, we've all been affected by the restrictions rightly imposed on us by the government in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Each day the news headlines have shown us harrowing stories of those who are in intensive care fighting the virus or those who've lost their lives already. And at the daily government briefings we're told just how many people have lost their lives in the previous 24 hours. In the face of these challenging and worrying times for everyone, it seems reasonable to ask, if there is a creator God, why does he allow such suffering? To begin reflecting on that question would take much more time than we have this morning. But God does care. And he cared enough to become one of us in the form of the man called Jesus. And it's because, because God cares that in the words of Jesus in our gospel reading this morning, 
He promises to be with us to the end of the age, to the end of time. There is, of course, much that we can learn from this passage in Matthew's Gospel. Historically, the church has emphasised its message of evangelism, of going out to all people and to teach them the good news that Jesus brings and to baptise them and to welcome them into his church. And that remains a vitally important part of the work of Christians and the church today. Yet as we think about how God is expressed as the Holy Trinity this morning, we can, as we reflect on this passage, also begin to discover new things. We reminded, for instance, that like us, sometimes the disciples had doubts. But we also learn about another amazing side of God, the side of God who didn't just create everything and pay no attention to it. Because the God that we believe is expressed as Father, Son and Spirit promises to be with us intimately because he is a God of love. God won't try to place us into a box like we might attempt to do with him sometimes. Despite our doubts and the inevitable mistakes we make, we are loved by God no matter what. Our gender, our status, our age, our background, nothing we are or what we can become can make us any more lovable to God. Consider for a few moments your own experiences of love. What is it that makes those experiences special? What is it that makes you know that you are loved? seems to me that we know we're loved when the love we are receiving is genuine. And we know it's genuine because of how it makes us feel. And so it can be in our relationship with God. Because if God was not Trinity, we would not be able to know him as love. There would have been no point in sending Jesus, his son, to die for us for the sake of love. There would be no point in the Holy Spirit being sent to the disciples to guide them and empower them for the sake of love. Belief in God, the Trinity, is to know both the God whose otherness and holiness is beyond our understanding, yet who we can also experience through love. The God who we can know through the experience of forgiveness given to us through Jesus' act of love on the cross. The God who we can know when we experience the power of his love through an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Our understanding of God the Trinity can only come from experiencing a relationship with him. We may not be able to fully understand the mystery of our God who created all that exists and whose presence can both surpass our understanding, yet also reveal him as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But we can understand and know in our hearts that we are loved by him, loved by the God who promises to be present with us always to the very end of the age. Amen. Amen. So we're now going to affirm our faith in God, as myself and Jan say together, the affirmation of faith. If you know the words, please feel free to join me. So let us affirm our faith in God. We proclaim together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we begin our time of prayer this morning, uh, again I'm just going to describe to you uh, 
a short activity, which you can do by yourselves, or if you have uh, children uh, with you, you can do uh, with your children. Or, of course, you can just uh, sit uh, in some silent prayer, which I'll invite you to do in a few moments' time. As we think uh, of God uh, as Trinity, it might be a good idea to uh, take just three strips of paper, find a sheet of paper, and write it on them three things that you'd like to pray about this morning. And uh, once you've written those uh, on the sheets of paper, take some sellotape or a stapler uh, and make uh, loops, a bit like you're doing uh, some Christmas decorations. So one loop and then put the other one through and staple that together or sellotape that together uh, as well. A bit like a paper chain. And then when you get the last one, you pop it through, but also pop it back through the first bit of the chain so that the link goes through together. Staple that and you'll end up, hopefully, with something that has no beginning uh, and no end. It looks a little bit like, uh, a little bit like that. And use that with those other images uh, of God that you went and collected earlier as an image uh, for uh, your prayer, something to help you. So if you ever want to pause the video uh, to go away, to pause this service to go away and get some paper and a pen and write down these three things that you think uh, you would like to offer to God uh, this morning. But if you have been and written down your intercessions, your offering to God, let's now offer them to Father, Son and Holy Spirit as we pray. We come to you, almighty God, three persons, yet one kneeling in awe before your majesty and accepting your invitation to bring before you our prayers and our requests. And so in a few moments of silent prayer, we offer our own prayers and all the things on our own hearts before the Lord. Eternal Father, you reign in glory over all things, but instead of being filled with your glory, your world is often full of darkness rather than light. War and violence lead to suffering, crime and conflict result in fear, greed and selfishness spoil your creation. And so we pray for governments around the world, for leaders of all kinds, both locally in our own communities and in our own government. We pray for all whose decisions affect our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Jesus, you died to redeem humankind and you rose in victory over evil and death. We pray for your church. We pray for it to grow in unity and love. We pray for Christian leaders in our own country. We particularly pray for Archbishop John Sentamu as he retires, and Archbishop-elect Stephen as he prepares to take on his new responsibilities. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, 
And in our own diocese, we pray for Bishop Martin and for our bishops designate, Ruth and Lynn. We pray for all parishes at this time, for those who are finding things difficult, for those who long to reopen their churches for themselves and their communities. And we pray for those who find that a frightening thought. We pray that you would guide us at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Life-giving Spirit, you reassure us and strengthen us in times of need. At this time, so many of our friends and loved ones need comfort and healing. We pray for all who feel stressed or anxious, those who feel upset, those who long to see their families. We pray for all known to us in our hearts. And we pray that your love would surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, three in one, source of all life. We pray for those who we love but see no longer. And we ask you to comfort all who've been bereaved. This time we particularly pray for those who have lost their lives to COVID-19, for any known to us personally. We pray for carers, nurses and doctors who have lost their lives seeking to save the lives of others. And we hold each one of them before you. Lord, as we pray, we ask that you would hear us and answer us. We ask that you would help us to live and work together in unity so that we would reflect your love and your glory in the world around us, in our own homes and in our communities. These and all we are prayers we offer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. So we now sing our final hymn this morning, the hymn We Have a Gospel to Proclaim.
you so much for joining us this morning here uh, in the parish of Henfield with Sherman Green Woodman Co. and uh, in the Parham Chapel here in St Peter's Church, Henfield. Uh, it's been a joy to spend time with you this morning uh, in prayer and in listening to God's word. And so let's pray now for God's blessing on each of us. God's the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.